what is going on at 343 Industries? For those of you that don't know, 343 just dropped their announcement for the roadmap, an updated roadmap for Halo Infinite, and boy is it looking bleak. Let me go first with saying do not harass any of these employees. It is okay to have constructive criticism, but straight up calling for harm on any of these employees is straight unwarranted. But let's dive deep into what this roadmap has for Halo fans. And as a lifelong Halo fan since literally Combat Evolved, I'm just so disappointed. So first off, the first half of this ro updated roadmap takes place between November 8th and March 7th. And we got a few things. We have Forge Beta, Campaign Network Co-op and Mission Replay, a new 30 uh, tier battle pass, a free one, and two new maps. There's also going to be a Match XP Beta, a new game mode, Covert One Flag, a December and January event, and some various quality of life improvements. In the second half here, between March 7th and June 27th, we got new maps again, Arena and Big Team Battle, a new weapon, a DMR-looking type thing, where you have a new equipment, the Shroud Screen, and a new Battle Pass in March. Upon there, you also have Custom Game Browser, In-Game Reporting, a new Game Mode, VIP and Escalation, there's a new Fracture Event, new narrative event, forge beta updates, and more quality of life improvements. So what do we have in this first half here? We have forge beta. It's not even coming out as a full release. Uh, they missed the mark by already over a year, and forge is just now becoming a beta, just now becoming available to the public, not even as the full release, so it's not even, you know, who's to say it's going to be completely bug-free or completely workable. I don't know what the hell is going on there and why it has taken so long to get Forge working. Whatever. Campaign, network, co-op, and mission replay. Mission replay, something that should have been in the game from the start. I don't know whose idea it was to say, hey, we're going to make this campaign. It's going to be open world. You're going to have so many missions uh, and not let you be able to replay those. So if you miss collectibles in a certain mission, you have to play the campaign again, get to that mission, and then you can get to collectibles. Sure, I, again, an, another thing that's been in every single Halo game since the dawn of time. They're just now getting to it. Campaign co-op, a thing that has been, again, in like every Halo game since the dawn of time. We're just now getting it, and it has been in beta, but now we're getting like the actual release of it. Uh, they scrapped split-screen like campaign co-op, uh, which a lot of people are mad about. I mean, like it's sad to hear, but quite honestly, couch co-op isn't super relevant anymore. I mean, most people have their own console and are able to play with their friends. Couch co-op is a nice feature to have, but quite honestly, the fact that they, they've they stopped development on split-screen campaign co-op, it, it's honestly, that doesn't matter too much to me. We're going to have a new battle pass, 30 tiers. It's all going to be free. Sure, that's fine with me. I mean, give me a little bit of something extra to work for. That's completely fine. Two new maps, Detachment and Argyle. So we're getting two maps. I think what we've gotten like two so far since launch. Like, it's been almost a year, and this game has very, very little to show for it. Match XP Beta, something that Halo Reach did completely fine with their credit system and how you got XP or credits after matches. They're just now getting to it, because right now Match XP is complete a game. You start with like 300 XP, and then by the time you complete five games, you're at 50 XP a match. No incentive to play the objective, no incentive to do well um, other than battle pass challenges, which may give you objective challenges, may not. They also force you to play certain game modes, so that's really annoying. New game mode, Covert One Flag, sure, I'm completely fine with that. Give me more game modes, give me more ways to play the game, and more playlists. Completely fine with that. New events, Winter Contingency 2 and the Joint Fire events, that is in December and January respectively. Those are fine. Again, I'm okay with in-game events. I just don't need that to be the only thing that happens in Halo Infinite. In-game events are fine. Gives you something to work for. Say, hey, this thing's going on for two weeks. Like, if you complete everything, you get a lot of cool cosmetics. Completely fine with that. No issue there. Quality of life improvements, we don't know exactly what that means, and nor did I really dive too deep into what they said in their uh, doc about what this new roadmap entails, so we can only hope that it's good things in terms of like the UI and how the main menu functions, so that's all fine. So in that first half, we got Forge, but in beta form. We're not getting the full release of Forge. We're getting a new battle pass, 30 tiers, it's free, that's cool. We're getting two new maps, just two, nothing more. I mean, any... Any content is good content in my eyes, so whatever. I'll take maps whenever you can get to them. K 
campaign co-op, something me and my buddy have been looking forward to for quite some time, to play Lasso and actually beat it together, like go for the achievement. Can't do it right now, even if it's in beta, because you're not going to get the achievement. It's not going to track. So, I mean, the first half, we have some good things here, but, like, it's just not enough, man. And here in the second half, again, arena and big team battle maps, great. Any content, again, is good content. Keep those maps coming. Like, I, I don't need them every four months to get me a map. Like, I just, as frequently as you can, update new maps into the game. There's a new weapon, the M392 Bandit, so it just looks like a DMR without a scope, which... I feel like you should have the DMR with the scope and put the commando as not scoped, but I mean, whatever, I'm not a game developer, so new weapon, that's cool, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. New equipment, shroud screen, again, again, more ways to play, like I'm completely fine with that, there's no issue at all. Um, and then between March 7th to June 27th, we have a new battle pass, 100 tiers, so a, another more than six month season, we're hitting like a 9 tenth month season. Season one was six months, this season, season two, Lone Wolves, was supposed to be six months. Now it's like 9 or 10. Um, and then we got some other things. So custom game browsing, again, another thing. Why was it not in at launch? Like, this is a thing that every Halo game has had as far as I'm aware. In-game reporting, something pretty much every game in existence has nowadays, especially online ones. Like, how do you not have a way to report players in-game? Like, I got to go through, like, a whole separate website or, like, on Halo Waypoint to report somebody or via Xbox itself. Like, it's annoying. New game modes, VIP escalation, good to hear, like, we're, we're getting a, a new game mode in that first half of the, um, in the first half of the roadmap, two more game modes, completely fine with, good, give me more reasons to play the game, give me more ways to play the game. A new fracture event, again, it's another event, much like Winter Contingency or Joint Fire, like, it's just more things to do in the game and i'm completely fine with that a new narrative event much like what we have now they're really hunkering down on events things that kind of progress the story at least in the world that we have of halo infinite so i'm completely fine with that forge beta updates between march 7th and june 27th we're getting updates to the forge beta we're not even getting a full release it's very very annoying and again more quality of life improvements all of these things are like why are we just now getting to these all, all these things that are, are relatively things that we've had in halo from the get-go from from combat evolved to halo reach four and five so many of these things are things that all of these games have had at launch and i seriously want to know what is going on at 343 as to how it's such a clusterfuck it's completely mismanaged like things that have been overlooked by the developers and things that have gone wrong in this game or the things that are lacking from the game what is going on at 343? And at this point, I have lost faith in, in this game. I still love Halo. It's my favorite game series of all time. I still really like Halo Infinite. The framework is there. The campaign was really good. I really enjoyed it. It's, it's exactly what I was expecting after Halo 5. The multiplayer, the gameplay, it is so good. The gunplay, the way everything feels, the customization, like all of that is great. They have the base work for a phenomenal 10 out of 10 game and they have just dropped the ball one after another and i understand that things do change in game development not every mark is going to be hit exactly on time but the fact that so many of these things are coming way more than a year after release is just very very concerning at this point a lot of management at 343 just needs to get out of there they need to like revamp half of the company because there's just so much that is going wrong and they have very little to show for it. They have very little in terms of new things to show us. We get new events with new cosmetics, which I am fine with. I am okay with having a reason to play the game to unlock certain things, but when that is it, the only thing is to come back once every couple weeks to grind a new event or attempt to level up in my battle pass, which I'm not even stressing over because I have nine months of this battle pass to do. I can be at level two right now and I can easily get to 100 by the time the new season pass or the uh, new battle pass rolls around. It's so sad, like, how far Halo has fallen. Halo Reach was a great game. Halo 4 was good. I, I didn't love it, but Halo 5, like, just dropped the ball. I didn't really like anything about it. And Halo Infinite was there. It was supposed to be the savior, the thing that brings Halo back from the ashes. And just while the framework is there, we have very, very little to show for it. And... Of course, like, half of these updates are coming out right as Modern Warfare 2 is around the corner. So, 343 is like, here's some things as Modern Warfare 2 pulls up to put a bullet between Halo's eyes. Like, it's just so sad that 
Halo has just fallen from where it once was, and at this point, when they said Halo Infinite's going to be a 10-year game, I think they meant it's going to take 10 years to finish it, because it's still, even with these updates that are going to happen, it's still not a finished game, and it's not going to be for a long time, and I'm just at my, like, wit's end with this, I, I've, I've given 343 the benefit of the doubt, I'm like, hey, the framework is there, they can do it, like, like, they've proven themselves before, and maybe they'll pull an MCC, and the game pulls back and is phenomenal, but when you drop the ball, and it's been, it's gonna be coming up on a year of this game being out, there's just so much you can do to appease this community now, and most people are probably very tired of their, what seems like lack of communication and the lack of content. Like, I could boot up Halo Reach 4, 5, and I have an account level in that game. I can see how much I've played the game based on my level or my service record. And in Halo Infinite, there is no account level. It's just your Battle Pass rank, which only you can see. And the service record is so bleak and barren. You can't see everything you've done, like, as opposed to the other Halo games. Halo Infinite needed another year, at least, in development until it actually released. It's just very sad to see, and I, I, one of my favorite franchises of all time has just fallen so far from where it once was. It's a saying that bears repeating, a delayed game is eventually good, a bad game on release is always going to be bad. Even if Halo Infinite pulls a No Man's Sky and comes around, has all these updates, and becomes a phenomenal game, a complete game, the community is always going to remember the mismanagement of Halo Infinite by 343. And that's never going to go away. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you still play Halo Infinite? What do you think of 343? Again, let me know what you guys think. Thank you for sticking around and watching the video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheerio, mates.